Hey, what a wonderful day to be here in the studio with y'all. So in these past couple videos, we are talking about organizing your naming structures from the channel rack to the playlist. And then now it's mixer time. So a really easy way to drop your sounds that you have into the mixer, if you don't have anything in the mixer yet, is I hold shift and I select everything in the channel rack. And then I hit control shift L and it's going to drop everything into the mixer here. or it should. Let's try this here. Channel routing. Okay, so it's got everything routed and it did not name them. Okay, so let's do that right here then. Control Shift L. So it's because I had already, um, I'd already kind of worked some of this stuff. So um, what it's gonna do is you can see how it named it from kick to pad, uh, from kick to pad here with control shift L. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you want to just drop an individual track in, then control L is going to drop it in the next available, uh, the next available channel for the mixer. So if I had the ARP as well, then it's gonna drop it in the next one. Let's say I wanted it specifically in channel in insert 21, then I can hit control L and it will drop it directly into 21. As you can see, as it's moving, even though these are still named, it's actually moving it to what insert you actually have it on. So the reason why this is so important is that when I am going to bounce out, when I do export, and I'm going to bounce this out as a, as a, as I'm gonna bounce out the stem files, I'm gonna hit the split mixer track, and whatever these are named is what it's going to label them. So instead of labeling them insert one through seven, it's gonna insert, it's gonna label them kick, snare, hi-hat, bass. So the how this jumps up your professionalism is when you sell me the beat, I'm the artist, I open this up or I send it to my engineer and he opens it up. We have no clue what insert one is. We have no clue what insert seven is. So then if I'm paying an engineer, I gotta come out with more money out of pocket just for my engineer to even figure out what's going on with the track. So if I have a pretty complicated track, then it could take another 15 to 30 minutes just for the engineer to organize the project. So once again, when I have the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, the bass, whatever, an engineer may wanna color code these things, but that's the only work he has to do is he's gonna color code his drums, he's gonna color code the bass, the synthesizers, the pianos, whatever, however he's gonna do that. But he doesn't have to figure out what sounds are there and he doesn't have to take the ARP and move it over here, um, you know, the kicks at the end, the hi-hats over here, the snares in the middle, um, things like that. Engineers normally run a very structured system. And so as a producer, this is just gonna bump up your level of professionalism and it's going to translate into the artist's mind of being that mu that meticulous in how you do things. So one last thing I wanna show in this is, okay, I got the ARP all the way over here. I don't need it over there anymore. I can hit Alt and I can either use the left or the right arrow key and I can move my, um, I can move my my channel and I think my keyboard just died so I can move the channel with alt and the arrow keys and I can move it over 
and that way I can reorganize my mixer channels if it's not already organized. So hopefully this helps you guys out that, you know, no, here we go. It's because I had the save on. So if you click the, tr the track, as you can see, I can move these around and get organized however I want to organize it. So, but keep your tracks named and it's going to help you out in collaborations. And like I said, once it gets down to the final stages. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay organized, stay productive. Talk to y'all later.